y'all! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yaritza. I am a former pre-K and kindergarten teacher, now starting a new position as an instructional coach. So I actually just finished up my second week in my new position. So I'm just going to share some updates on everything that went on this week because it was very jam-packed with information. So let me start with those updates and then I'll show y'all what I got out of my storage unit and why. I mentioned in my last vlog that my district is still during summer hours, so they operate a little bit differently. We do 40 and 4, which means that we work 10 hour days Monday through Thursday, but we get Fridays off. So I had today off and I definitely slept in, got some iced coffee, made myself breakfast, was watching YouTube. Anyway, I love that we are getting Fridays off. The 10 hour work days have been kicking my butt it was much better this week so let me start with monday so kind of three highlights for monday most of our day our senior manager senior supervisor walked us through this document that explained the coaching cycle to us so it went into much more detail as to what coaching looks like what we can do what we can't do that coaching cycle was broken up into kind of eight steps so we went very in-depth about what each step looks like. And I can't show y'all the document because it has my, my district information on it, but I'll just read what those steps are because I definitely did not learn them by heart yet. We talked about when we are first getting to know our teachers, there is a needs assessment page that the teachers complete. So it breaks up different categories and how they feel about themselves in each of those categories. And this needs assessment is aligned with T-Test, which is the observational tool that my district will be implementing this school year. But apparently I've heard that other districts in Texas already follow this observational tool. So it just pulls from different indicators and we try to talk the teacher into really being honest about how they feel in, in each of those indicators. Which brings us into the second component, which would be like setting those goals and planning that learning. And then number three says facilitate the pre-observation conference once you have a bit of a game plan and then you narrow it down to the very first thing that you'll be observing. So number three would be to facilitate that pre-observation conference. Number four would be to observe the instruction. Number five would be facilitating that post-observation conference, giving that feedback. Number six would be offering modeling strategies or expectations. So you talk about that and then number seven would be conducting what we call an at bats which is having like that role playing that scenario in a way like practicing it and then number eight would be having a follow-up and review the outcomes and then we were also provided with like an observation and feedback guide slash checklist that we could also use and then anytime that we're having those conversations with teachers we do have like a very specific log that we log all that information to, but they did explain to us that we keep it very simple. It's really broken down into four different areas, which is what's working, what are your concerns, challenge, focus areas, what are your next steps, and what can I do to support you? Oh, just kidding, it's six boxes. Then you decide on your next meeting date and the focus for the next meeting. At the end of Monday, they did let us know what professional development everybody will be in charge of. So our managers did finish making a schedule of all of the professional development that early childhood will be providing um, virtually and face-to-face -face for the fall semester. So everybody was assigned a specific training and it's all done within partners. So that's, that's less nerve wracking. Like they're never gonna send you on your own to do a training. And y'all, I have not written it down because I know how I can access it how I can access the list through our Google Drive. So I haven't written it down. So off the top of my head, I know that I'll have a training at the end of September and then one at the end of October. And one of those is going to be focused on introducing workstations. I cannot remember which one. Probably the one at the end of September will be that. Oh, and then the other one is um, like focused on pre-A guided reading small group instruction. That's it. So those are my two trainings that I will be responsible for with a teammate. So I do have a different teammate each time that I present 
but I noticed one of the teammates like we haven't met yet. I also mentioned last week that we started off with 11 teammates in total, including myself last week. And then this week we had another two join in, so we're at 13, but we are a total of 20 as of right now, 20 instructional coaches for pre-K. And so I think they're still looking to hire one more for a total of 21. So because some are coming from other districts, like all the HR process is delaying some of the start times for some of the new teammates. So they'll, they'll be slowly trickling in as that gets situated. And all of that to say is that that first teammate I'm presenting with, I haven't met because they haven't started. And then that second time I present, <laughs> I am going to be presenting with a teammate, which I would just, which I would describe her like as the most extroverted out of all of us. So I thought that was really funny and probably intentional from my director because when we've been talking about ourselves all of last week like I I mentioned that I'm like very introverted I do like pushing myself out of my comfort zone but I know that I'm like a very big introvert at heart so I just thought it was funny that she paired me with like the most extroverted but it'll be really good because when I know I have to push myself out of my comfort zone it really helps me to have somebody that is like naturally like just extroverted and has that energy because I'll be able to like feed off of their extroverted energy. So that was big news on Monday. And then we also got to look through an inventory list. This was something I didn't know. So last school year, our district adopted new curriculum and they also bought pre-K supplies and they're really more like center activities, center supplies for all pre-K teachers across all the district and that list is I think it's like five pages and it's broken into like literacy materials and math materials so we walked through it so we know what each teacher should have in their classroom so we're keeping in mind that when we do need to model or help them come up with activities we know that they should have all of that material it should make it easier for them to implement whatever we're modeling for them with that material. So that was Monday. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, and yesterday, we were at a different building in my district. And for these three days, it was a very large training and it involved multiple departments in my district. So not just early childhood, it was probably around 200 people. So on day number one, we, were, we went even more in depth about what coaching should look like and how as a district we're going to be implementing a very specific system across all the department which is why all of the coaches and administrators are present so that everybody can be on the same page and this training was also provided to principals so let me talk a little bit more about it we got three documents that day two of them are booklets so this was the participants guide which followed along with the presenter in the different areas that they were hitting this is what we were really dissecting it's called get better faster which is modeled after a book called get better faster and i'm blanking on the author's name but this book is a highly recommended coaching guide so they put these documents together based on the get better faster book and this is just like a very tiny snippet and our district did say that they ordered that specific book for all of the coaches. So at some point we are supposed to get it. And on Fridays, we'll be dissecting it little by little amongst the early childhood department team. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that was like the focus on Tuesday is really breaking this down. And then on Wednesday, we got to know two of the administrators so basically like the two bosses of all of the departments they both shared you know just a little bit they talked about themselves their experience in education where they're coming from i really do think they're very like effective leaders i i really think they're gonna make some great things happen this year especially with streamlining this process of coaching yeah that was most of the morning on Wednesday was like kind of getting to know them, understanding why we're doing what we're doing. We looked at TEA, which is the Texas Education Agency, and like they shared some research and why our district is making the changes that they're making aligned with the TEA 
So I think that was most of Wednesday and then yesterday was focusing on like the leadership aspect and again getting to understand what our district is trying to do and how leadership how good leadership plays a role in that so we had an article that we read that we were talking through that was the first chunk of our day and then after lunch we focused on data which i didn't even know we have like a data department so they showed us how to access different types of ports so that was something that early childhood participated on but did not like it was not applicable to us because we only have one test and all of the data that we pull from that test is not a part of the like the district interface that everybody else uses to pull reports but we still participated in that and then we had a great ending to our day because we got dismissed early i thought we were gonna stay till like 5 5 30 but we got dismissed by 3 30 and all of the early childhood department got new teacher cards and a backpack and school supplies so that just made like my teacher heart so happy so i'm gonna show y'all the new teacher cart and backpack well i guess first i'll show y'all like this is my oldest teacher cart and i really like it but i don't know what i put in here that made it break so i had to tape it but got my small group caddy out because i'm going to be making a video in the near future about small group instruction so i just wanted to have that handy and then i got a couple of binders out be because i want to put together a resource for myself on resources that i'll be referring to very often so that i could just have it ready and i got out some sterling bins which i'm just gonna use to organize my papers so that's some stuff i got out of storage today and this is my beautiful new cart. Do y'all see these wheels? They're so big and smooth. So it is a bit more clunkier than that one, but I think that should mean that it's more durable. I thought this was also a pretty cool feature. It just has like a fishnet. I don't know what I would put in there, but extra storage is always nice. I don't know what brand this is, but like I said, it looks very sturdy and I'm probably gonna be ordering a sticker so I can put my name on it. But let me show y'all this backpack because I was just like nerding out to this backpack yesterday. So first off, it is embroidered with our district and I really love that it says be the change because that's literally my favorite quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. So I am in love with how many pockets it has. So let me show y'all what I put in here already. In this first pocket, I'm going to use it for my laptop. So if I put it in here, it's, it's just too tight. So I'm just gonna be putting it in here. And I have a couple of other things. I always carry Sharpie. So this is all just different types of Sharpies. And this little bag I've had since high school and I just use it to store my own pens, sticky notes, stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to keep in there. And then I have the next pocket which has even more pockets inside. And I'll be putting my planner in here, my notebook, and I don't even know what else because it's just so much room. This pocket, you have a couple more here. You have a zipper in here, and you have a little pocket here on the outside as well, and one that goes across like this on, on the outside of the backpack as well. So maybe I'll put my charger, my computer charger in here, and then of course it has the water bottle insert, and overall like it's just a very sturdy backpack. I've never heard of this brand, but I looked it up on Amazon, and it's a really nice brand, y'all. This is just like so sturdy and comfy. It reminds me of like the higher end Jan sports that have like this little cushion so it doesn't hurt your shoulders. And then some supplies we were given is a binder, a notebook. This is another notebook that it has like our, our district name on it. I just bought a darn notebook, but I guess whenever I run out of 
space in that notebook I just got. I'll be using these couple of two. I got a mouse pad with a wireless charger, which is really awesome. That's something that I won't have to buy. The mouse is in here. Hand sanitizer on the go. And then we have sticky notes, sentence strips. Oh, just kidding. This is the mouse. Oh, I know what this is. It's a fast charger. It was not the mouse. That's some tape, scissors, a pen, a couple of pieces of tape. We got this big old thing of push pins. Oh, so some basic stuff, but the most the things that I'm most excited about is like this backpack and this teacher cart because I was probably going to end up buying my own since I just showed y'all that this blue one is not very sturdy. So I'm just going to wrap it up like it was just a, another fantastic week. And next week on Monday, we are going to be reporting to our office space and we'll probably clarify some questions with like everything and like process everything that we learned this week. Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, I will be at a Rice University training. I don't know the name of the training off the top of my head. I mentioned it in the last vlog, but it will be focused on literacy and writing. We will actually be working next Friday because there's a training that they were unable, like due to scheduling conflicts, like they could only schedule it this Friday. So next week we won't be working 40 and four. There will be this exception. We will be working Monday through Friday from eight to five. So we do have a training that I think a couple of other departments are gonna join. And from what I gathered, I think it's going to be a training focused on staying organized. And I don't know if they'll teach us like very specific systems on how to stay organized and really manage the most out of your time, which I definitely need. So that is all I know about next week, but I look forward to it. So that's it for my updates for this week, y'all. I know this was just a very chatty vlog, but I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.